Well, this is different. Welcome to another video. All right, so elephant in the room. I am on camera for the first time, sort of. Well, at least on purpose and without a script, as you will definitely be able to tell because I have no idea exactly what I'm talking about. But basically, I wanted to make a pretty quick video talking about upgrading the TrueNAS server we made previously, and I didn't wanna take a ton of time to make that video because I wanna to get to some other stuff. And so I figured this might be a quick, easy way to sort of make that video happen. Yeah, you get to see me on camera for the first time, I guess. So I apologize, because it's probably not great. I'm trying to figure out a lot of things on how to make that better with, with lighting that I, is sort of non-existent. Um, I'm working on getting some more lights and some other stuff because I'd like to make the video quality a little bit better in general, but yeah, this is probably gonna be a little bit rocky, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, upgrading our TrueNAS server because, well, we had some issues. I had originally planned pretty early on to, to upgrade the TrueNAS server down the road. I thought it would be pretty fun for the channel to have a server, um, a NAS that I actually used but that we could sort of upgrade and there'd be a progression to that. But unfortunately that schedule was sort of expedited when our poor little J2900 motherboard here unexpectedly died and I might have killed it a little bit. So a few weeks after having the server running around the time I was actually editing or making the DIY NAS versus Asus Store NAS video, I started having issues with the NAS and eventually figured out that this motherboard was the fault. I had some weird crashes and errors and things happening and then eventually it just wouldn't post. At one point I actually thought it was the power supply because it failed to post with, it's kind of a weird situation. Um, this motherboard's dead, that's for sure. I've tested it multiple times in tons of different configurations, tried um, taking the CMOS battery out, everything I can think of, everything I tried to do in the previous video where we fixed this poor guy and got it working with the right RAM. Um, I tried all those things and this guy is just dead. Um, it does not work at all. And how I think it actually got killed was the, oh, do I have a power supply around here? Okay, well, I'll just pull this little adapter out of a box, but basically one of the Molex pins on the fan connectors on those Antec fans that were in, oh, it's, yeah, it's down there. But those Antec fans, one of these connectors, it sort of like slipped out and I think it actually shorted on the case because the, the NAS was fine and then I, when I tinkered around, when I had to replace the PCIe card that also failed, I think the fan had removed enough to where that little pin that had like poked out shorted to ground and that may have been causing some issues, um, which is why I originally thought it was a power supply thing. It was kind of weird trying to troubleshoot that, but then I figured out it wasn't the power supply, and then at that point, the motherboard just stopped posting at all. So I think that may have been the case because I found that pin just poking out. I might have some B-roll of that. I don't know. I haven't really taken apart this NAS and done a whole lot once I got it back up and running, just because I kind of needed it up and running to keep making videos and stuff. But yeah, I think that little pin might have shorted to ground, and I think that might have caused some issues and potentially killed that poor little motherboard. So in the meantime, I actually replaced it with one of the old HP motherboards. It was one of the motherboards I had in one of the first videos I've ever made on the channel. It was the motherboard from the system that didn't have like a good case, and so I've been using it as my test bench for a while. Um, we've had a Athlon X4640 in it. So I actually just popped that in there because I needed something to make sure the rest of the system worked and I hadn't damaged anything else. Anyway, I do not want an Athlon X4640 sitting in, running down here because it is not very efficient and not super fast. It's actually worked really well just for getting the job done, but it's definitely not as fast or as efficient as I would prefer it to be. And so I decided to go ahead and sort of expedite my plan to upgrade our TrueNAS server. And so, since I have a few fourth gen Intel CPUs just sort of lying around and circulating through different systems, I decided to go down that route. And so, I got this motherboard on eBay, I believe. Um, it's a Super Micro something. Um, I don't know the model, it'll probably be in the description or on this video somewhere. It supports fourth gen i3s or Xeons and it has four memory slots. Is that what they're called? 
yeah, so it has four memory slots. It supports up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 ECC memory, which I'll get to in a bit. It has a lot more SATA ports. We actually have, I think that's four Gen 2 SATA, so three gigabit per second ports, and then two Gen 3, so six gigabit per second ports. And so actually in our current configuration, we won't need PCIe cards, or HBAs, anything like that. We can actually just use these SATA ports, which is awesome. It has an internal USB 3, which is pretty cool if we were running Unraid and we could actually run our current configuration using this, but I'm probably going to, I actually don't know at the time of recording this, if I'm going to stick to my little USB drive I have, or if I'm going to put a, like a 128 gig SSD. I'm not quite sure yet, I haven't decided. Future me will let you know. And then for the CPU, we're going to actually use our i3-4160, just because I don't really plan on running a lot of VMs or containers or things like that on this machine. I, I really want it to be pretty dedicated just to like NAS stuff. I'll probably run some things for like cloud sync and backups. But yeah, I think the 4160 is gonna be plenty for what I need it to do and not consume a ton of power while doing it. And I have it just sitting up over here. So I'm gonna use it. On the back, we also have, if I remember correctly, so we have a little display out, which is great. And then we have two gigabit ethernet ports and then an IPMI port, which I'm probably not going to use. And then a few more USB ports, which is cool. So yeah, generally a good amount of IO on this board it should fit in our motherboard pretty well. Oh yeah, duh, PCIe. We have two PCIe 3.0 by eight slots. Um, this one's a by 16, but it's it's only wired up for by eight. So two by eight 3.0 and then one PCIe Gen 2 by four down here. So that should give us a lot of options in terms of IO if we wanna add, well, first of all, we can probably put our two and a half gigabit card here. So we still have our two and a half gigabit ethernet, but we could add an HBA or something, more things in the future if we want. So pretty cool, I'm excited for this. I think it's gonna be great. So we have our motherboard, we have our CPU, oh, we need RAM. So for memory, I found these four sticks of DDR3 ECC um, this is unbuffered, which is what this motherboard requires, but it is 32 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory. I forgot how much I spent on this because I'm going to be honest, it's like 10 o'clock at night and I'm just trying to sit down and knock this out while I have some time. So it'll be on the screen somewhere how much I paid for this. But yeah, I got a pretty good deal on eBay for 32 gigs of DDR3 and that's what we're going to use and it's going to be pretty cool. I think that's about it for this portion of the video. At some point here in a few days, I'm probably going to actually have time to sit down and put this all in the case and get our NAS set back up. And I'll probably talk to you then. But thanks for bearing with me on this. I know it's probably a rocky ride. I really am a lot better with a script. But let's actually go build some computer stuff. That'll be a lot more fun.
Getting the NAS back up and running was really simple. It defaulted to booting from the TrueNAS install, so the only thing I really had to change was the network settings for the gigabit connection. All four of the 8 gigabyte sticks were recognized, so we have 32 gigabytes of memory available with ECC. I got a few comments on my last NAS build video about how ZFS needs ECC memory for proper checksumming, and using non-ECC memory can cause serious issues. It seems like there is a bit of a debate about this, and many people seem to argue that ZFS isn't more dependent on ECC than any other file system, but I think it's just a smart move to move to ECC, especially since I'm currently using this NAS to store everything for this channel. Data protection is nice, but I'm curious to see how this system will perform with four times the memory and the i3-4160. To start things off, I just repeated my real-world test from the previous video, copying a little less than 60 gigabytes of footage, audio, images, and other project files to and from my SMB share. With the new setup, writing took 24% less time at 5 minutes and 16 seconds, and reading the files back only took 4 minutes and 56 seconds, which was 27% faster than the previous system. I reran Crystal Disk Mark on my iSCSI target and saw very solid improvements there as well, although the Q1T1 score was consistently lower for some reason. I'm not quite sure on that one, maybe you guys know and can put it in the comments below. The upgraded system pulls around 42 watts at idle, which is only slightly more than the previous system. However, it does jump up quite a bit more to 70 watts while under load. I think the performance increase completely justifies the increase in power draw though. I've been using the system for a few days with basically no issues, except for one thing. The fans, for some reason, cycle between the lowest and highest RPM every few seconds or so. I think it has something to do with the fan RPM going too low, so the system tries to correct by ramping them all the way up, or something along those lines. I ended up finding some tips that let me use the IPMI tool to run some commands to change the fan ramp to max, and then set a speed percentage. It's a bit too much to explain here, but it works, and I was able to get the RPMs down to a near quiet speed. To make sure this happens anytime the system resets, I just set up an init command in TrueNAS, and it works great. I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and the extra read cache provided by our RAM upgrade is definitely noticeable when working on editing or browsing files. Eventually, I'll start running out of space, and we can look into adding another VDEV or something, but for now, I think this system is perfect for what I need. Do you think I made a good upgrade, or would you have bought something else? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the channel, and maybe check out some of my other server videos. If you want to help support more projects like this, maybe check out my Patreon as well. That's it for this one though, so as always, thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.